Hey, good morning, everyone. Welcome to Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. Um, really good to see you all. It was an awesome morning just to be able to spend a few moments uh, with our, our senior class, class of 2022. Woo! This moment always comes more quickly than I can imagine, so we're so glad to have the class photo. And today we hear from a, a wonderful sophomore, Samantha. Good morning, Bay. My name is Sam, and I'm a sophomore. And today I wanted to talk about the topic of love languages, or more specifically, how love languages have impacted my life. First of all, what is a love language? A love language is the way in which you express your love for someone, or the way in which you'd like others to express their love for you. Whether it be a simple I love you or giving your friend a hug, everyone has different ways of expressing their love. In general, there are five different love languages. And sometimes the ways in which we prefer to receive our love are different from the ways that we express it. The first love language is acts of service. Acts of service are when you perform an action for a loved one that you know they'd appreciate. Whether it be cooking dinner for your family or helping your friends study for their test, by following through with these actions, you're showing your love for someone. The next one is physical touch. This is, when you express, expre <laughs> this is when you express affection through physical touch, physical closeness, and other forms of connection. Physical touch can be a pretty divisive subject, especially in 2022 when shaking hands with someone is weird and we've all finally realized that some people are kind of gross. I'm kidding, but... <laughs> <laughs> through doing these things, you're showing your love for someone else. Next is quality time. Quality time is spending dedicated and attentive time with a loved one. Being present with a loved one can really show your love for them, and it doesn't even have to be big. A great way of showing your love could just be going on a drive or going to the grocery store with someone. But just being with someone can show your love for them as long as you make the most of it. Following that is giving and receiving gifts. I'm sure that almost everyone likes receiving gifts, even if you're one of those people that says that you don't want anything on your birthday, I'm sure you'd like to still receive something. The last one is words of affirmation, and these are verbal expressions of love, appreciation, and respect. Perhaps you feel the most loved when a teammate praises you for doing well, or when someone says those three magical words of, I love you. These are words of affirmation. Next, I'd like to talk about how the difficult thing about all of this is that there's no universal love language. You could do anything for anyone. You could give them millions of hugs. You could help them with their wordles every day. And they still might not feel the love. But that's because everyone's different. You could even say, I love you 24 hours a day for seven days a week. Still might not happen but that's okay. And this brings me to my past personal experience with love languages. When I was younger, my parents didn't have much time to spend with my brother or I. They'd drop us off at our respective schools, then they'd go to work. Then they'd pick us up and drop us off at home with our nanny. It was weird. I didn't really get to see much of them, but I didn't really understand why when I was younger. Sometimes they'd be home for dinner, but sometimes it felt like I rarely ever got to see them. I always yearned to see more of my parents, and I'd always look forward to the garage door opening or the sound of my mom's boots clicking down the sidewalk, which signaled that they were home. It wasn't as though that they were deliberately leaving us because that they didn't want to be with us, nor was it that they were unpresent from our lives. But it was just confusing. I was confused as to why they weren't with us more often, even with how often they always said that they loved us. Maybe it'd still bother me to this day if I hadn't had a conversation with my friend. We were just talking and she mentioned that her love language was words of affirmation. I was confused, but I just smiled and nodded and did that thing where you act like you know what someone's talking about, but you really don't. I just didn't wanna feel left out of the conversation. 
She saw right through it, though, and told me that there's a test that I could take that would tell me my own personal love language. So when I got home, I took the quick test, and here were my results. The fact that my number one form of love language is quality time makes a lot of sense to me. Clearly, there are some that I don't like as much. It's not that I don't like being touched or being around people, it's just that it's not my first option of love language. It's not my second or third or fourth either, but anyways. Quality time started to make a lot more sense to me, and I started to realize why I probably wanted to spend more time with my parents when I was younger. And although my parents weren't constantly catering to my own personal love language, my mom always made sure to show that she loved us. It wasn't always through her words, and it definitely wasn't through grand gestures like taking us to Disneyland every year, but she had her own special way. Every night, she would peel and cut and shave our fruit for us. Our apples would be peeled and cut into symmetrical pieces, and our oranges would be free of the stringy white parts that no one likes. Our berries would be washed with salt so that they were clean, and it was all topped off with a toothpick so that our hands wouldn't get sticky. Fresh fruit would be piled high in our bowls and ready for us to eat. Not only was I being completely pampered with this treatment, but this was also my mom's own love language for us. Of course, I didn't understand at the time that this simple act of preparing fruit was an act of love. But now looking back, I can recognize that it was. I can see how my parents going out and working their butts off for our family was their sign of love, even if it meant late nights at their respective offices or mornings where I only got to see one of them. This was just my parents loving and caring for my brother and I. The world is full of complexities, and part of those complexities is the tricky topic of love. It took me a while to understand that although my parents weren't always catering to my love language, they were showing their care in their own love language. It takes time, but for human relationship to work, we have to at least attempt to not only understand the people around us, but also, but also dedicate time to understanding ourselves. It took me years to understand and empathize with my parents, but along with discovering more about who they were, I was able to uncover more about who I am. To this day, I'm still pampered with the treatment of my mom preparing fruits and vegetables for me. Even at 16, when we both know that I'm fully capable of doing it myself, I'll never say no to a bowl of fresh fruit that is piled high and packed with her love. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. I always love hearing from students. All right, everyone. So mindfulness is an act of self-love. So if you are like me, and you hold tension in your body like I do, it always takes me a little bit of time to relax enough to take some deep breaths. So I'm going to set you up to do that. So let's sit up straight so we're not collapsed on our lungs. And actually tilt your chin up a little so you're not collapsed on your esophagus. I welcome you to close your eyes or soften or lower your gaze. Now take a moment to release any gripping in your jaw. Relax that space between your eyebrows. Relax your cheeks. Release any gripping in your neck, your shoulders, your back. Let your arms and fingers go limp. Release any gripping in your legs, your feet, and your toes. And in this more relaxed position, we're going to take three deep breaths and then settle into silence and stillness. One. Two. 
to. Slowly come back into the room. Okay, 